Hello everybody, we have a ride today. We're in Seattle, it's probably one of the best days that we've had in about a week or so, so I had to get out, of course, get some thoughts that I've had to share with y'all. A couple of really exciting things, well the ET Max is now getting into the hands of a lot more people, so I think that's super exciting news. So looking forward to seeing what the potential is on the ET Max, and honestly not just the ET Max, but also all the other cool electric unicycles coming out. I heard that there was some sort of e-wheel special coming out for this sort of like a lighter weight, sort of fast electric unicycle. Super rumors I've been hearing about that, which is like very preliminary. And then also heard that Roger EUC is getting onto the E-Wheels electric unicycle racing team. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I, you probably already know because now his intros have E-Wheels as opposed to EVs. I would love personally one day to be skilled enough to be a, on a team. So that's my long-term goal. Now, I'm not necessarily taking steps every single day to reach that goal because I also have things I have to do in my life. A lot of you do too. This is an excellent hobby. But it's not necessarily the thing that's going to sustain you or help you build long-term wealth. I can tell you for a fact, there's a lot of electric unicycle riders in my own very region who are much better riders than I am. So I'm just going to say that. But I do put myself out here on the YouTube. And like I said, I have long-term goals. I do want to increase my skills every single day. Hopefully I do something towards that even if I was not always riding but uh, I do ride I do ride to commute as well if I could do anything to make a difference in the electric unicycle community it would be to bring more positivity constructive criticism and overall generally some sort of more camaraderie between riders You gonna go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man. So yes, and I do think that we can be the change that we'd like to see. So even though, yes, I will often receive some hateful comments or some rude comments, I'll try to respond as positively as I can. It's not really gonna hurt my feelings even though I do think about it a little bit. Uh, yeah, it was just playful fun. And I think what a big part of, I think a big part about what the community can help each other with is having the intention to be positive to each other, having the intention to be supportive. I think that's what uh, we could really do better because, okay, I, like I said, people don't have to be super nice all the time. That said, if they have the intent of being productive or helpful or useful in some way, that makes all the difference in my book. So that's why I'm not going to interpret people's comments in a necessarily bad way because I know there could be some intent behind it such as, well, maybe they're having a crummy day. Maybe they don't understand. At the same time, I also think that people do have a lot of attachment to their electric unicycles and a lot of people have attachment to their brands. So that's why, I, personally, I don't like to go around trash talking wheels. I think some people spend too much time trash talking wheels or trash talking brands. No brand has a perfect. Now, I've only been riding Bogode, and for me, it's been pretty good. That said, I have seen what's been happening with Leaper Kim. The Lynx has been having some cutout issues, but they did address it publicly. Eagles worked with people, they released the firmware update. The issues was the InMotion 
was having some issues. There was like some forward dip, some torque issues. That apparently got quietly updated, so the communication was not as much there. And batteries do seem to be getting more powerful, safer. So overall, I think we're heading in the right direction. Especially on the Facebook group. If you're on any Facebook groups, I feel like that's the probably number one area where people can become more positive to each other. If there's one thing that I have learned personally is that no single perspective is inherently 100% accurate because all perspectives and well, every issue is multifaceted. So every single issue is multifaceted. Therefore, no one perspective can know everything. Which is why it's amazing and fantastic as humans that we come together and collaborate. This electric unicycle community is extremely international. Most of my viewers, maybe about half, are in America. The other half are worldwide. And as I mentioned before, the electric unicycle community is growing and growing and growing and growing. It's a wonderful time to be involved with it. You're on the forefront of single wheel self-balancing technology. Another unicycle! Just saw another person. Pretty cool helmet. So yes, here we are, the forefront of electric unicycle, self-balancing single wheel technology. And each time the wheels get more powerful and or more advanced, as you've seen with the Bagode Falcon coming out, now there's quote unquote lighter wheels with suspension coming out, which things pretty cool. Johnny Go Vroom seems to be quite enthusiastic about this. Oh yes, and that also goes to speak about what is ethical electric unicycle rider behavior? How fast should electric unicycle riders truly be going? Personally, I feel that we should continue pushing the boundaries as long as we're not putting other people in danger and in harm. I would love to see 100 mile per hour electric unicycle. I see no reason why not to push the boundary. There's always people that are going to say, well, there's no need for that. I mean, there's no need for a lot of things. There's no need for a lot of things. But you got to keep pushing it. And the more you push it, the more you learn. Also, going back to electric unicycle behavior and ethics, should they ride in bike lanes? Should the smaller ones be allowed on the sidewalks? I do think that maybe in the future they'll Okay, we all know regulations are coming. If you pay paying any attention to what's happening with e-bikes, you know for sure that regulation is coming for electric unicycles. If you don't know what I'm talking about, in multiple areas from coast to coast in the US of A, there have been deaths caused by e-bikes, specifically by people underage, legit children, are killing people or getting killed on e-bikes. So as you can imagine, that's a pretty serious issue. Legislation often comes after significant events like this. A person did die after being hit by electric unicycle in the UK. I'm not quite sure where or what the uh, punishment was for that person, but it was an older gentleman who got hit and he died from his injuries. So now that electric unicycles are A, becoming more prominent, and B, becoming more powerful, you can know for sure there's gonna be coming regulation in the future here. And it might not even be that far away. In uh, the Seattle Bellevue area, there is some talk by the council members about electric scooters specifically because now they're feeling that electric scooters are 
a hazard to pedestrians, especially a lot of these bike lanes, which were bike lanes, let's face it guys, bike lanes are made for people going 15, max 20 miles per hour. And here we are seeing e-bikes, scooters going like freaking 30, 35, 40. And let's say you're an elderly person, especially if you're in Seattle area where people are getting older or like most countries were getting older with you know, birth rate decline and all that. If you're an older person, you don't have the reflexes so much to get out of the way or even to know to look for these things. And I'll tell you, there's another time I was passed by a V-Set electric scooter, all black attire, no lights on. They were passing me at probably 30, 35 miles per hour and they got kind of close to me and I think it might've been a little bit of a, an aggressive move, I'm not sure. So yes, that's why we do need to think and talk about ethical, responsible electric unicycle use. And we do need to talk about how electric unicycle riders can have a voice in the legislation. Because if we're not involved in it, then they can just make the rules for us without even knowing what's going to happen. For example, there's no point banning electric unicycles on the sidewalks entirely because let's say that you have an electric unicycle that's 20 pounds goes 15 miles per hour and the rider usually goes between 5 to 10 miles per hour. They're not going to really even want to be in the bike lanes necessarily on something like that, but it could be a perfect last mile, half mile transportation and or mobility device, significant mobility device for people. And then you have probably other electric cycles that max out maybe 25 miles per hour. The bike lane is probably perfect for them. And then everything after 40 miles per hour, we could probably get into the road. And then if we're in the road, well, now we're unlicensed, uninsured vehicles. Lots of people are lane splitting, running red lights. I mean, look, I'm not gonna tell you that I never do anything that a registered vehicle would be obliged to not do, okay? So I would not admit to that necessarily. However, it makes clear sense to me that if pedestrians can walk across the street on a red and be socially accepted in society, then if an electric unicycle cautiously crosses, let's say a one-way road where they had the red, but there was no cars coming, I don't think that's really that much of an issue. Another thing is that electric unicycles tend not to not want to dismount. I mean, if you're anything like me, that once you get on, generally you don't like to dismount, which is kind of like why I like being on this road right now, because it's just a continuous road for the most part. There's some turns, yeah, but only coming from one direction, and they have stop signs. So we're just continuing here, which is really nice. That said, a lot of drivers, if you're at a four-way stop, a lot of drivers, even if you are going super slow and indicating that they should go, these drivers will still just wait, sit there. Or some drivers, even if you do stop, the drivers will try to flash their lights on you and try to pass you through. So based off of driver behavior, it makes sense why a lot of electric unicycle rider, riders don't make those full complete stops. For one, it just seems like it causes even more congestion on the road when electric unicycle riders make those full complete stops. That said, I do make judgment calls. If I show up to a four-way stop and there's somebody who's been waiting there for obviously a long time, I'm going to make a complete stop and let them go. If there's somebody who has a turn signal on, they're way ahead of me, and uh, then I think that if it's their turn, then yeah, I'll make a stop. I'll stay way behind. Oh man. about the upcoming electric unicycle regulation or also the pending e-bike regulation that's happening definitely leave your thoughts in the comments below it's extremely relevant other things that are happening with regard to PEV regulation in uh, I believe in San Francisco they're going to 
limit the amount of PEVs per household to like four and you can't use extension cords or uh, other types of ways to charge off of that. So yeah, regulations are coming y'all. They are coming. Okay, okay, let's say for example, let's say thought experiment. If you are a person who writes laws, what law, and you had to write laws about electric unicycles, what laws would be ideal for you that could strike a balance between safety, reliability, accountability, all that? If you were a lawmaker, what laws would you enact for electric unicycles? Personally, I do believe that in terms of infrastructure, they should incorporate more electric lanes. So we're talking, you have a bike lane, you got a sidewalk, you have an electric mobility lane, and then you have the regular roads. So that way, electric mobility devices can filter to the front of all the intersections, gives more incentive to ride electric mobility devices because takes cars off the road, less use of electricity, less space, better for people's bodies. I mean, aside from you know the crashes and the injuries that occur from electric unicycle, I'll tell you, sitting down in a car is horrible for your posture, especially for long periods of time. Whereas standing on electric unicycle, it's almost like you could fix your posture issues in some way, as long as you're not leaning over too much or hunching and things like that. And it was suspension that can help your knee joints. So tell me what you think. Even though likely there will be regulations, that doesn't mean that they're going to be enforced equally. So some jurisdictions, as long as you're looking like you're doing respectful things and not causing a mess, then you're probably gonna be fine getting away with what you've probably already been getting away with. That said, as soon as something major happens, significant incidents, just know there will be repercussions, not just on your life, but it'll go throughout the entire community. So with that said, be safe, subscribe, hit the like button. See you next time.